You want to know what electrical engineering is really like? Which classes are pitfalls? How to choose the best focus to land your first job? Today, we'll be getting into all of that and more in the Electrical Engineering Roadmap, University Edition. We've split up the EE curriculum into four different sections. Foundational Subjects, Electrical Engineering Core, Field-Specific Courses, and the Exit Design Class. Before we start, a quick reminder that each university does things a little differently, but the ideas in this video will hold true for any electrical engineering student. Now make sure you're buckled up, because we've got an engineering degree to get through. Let's start with the foundational subjects. The first hurdle as an electrical engineering major is your general education and core courses. These classes are intended to round out your curriculum and make sure you're not just some solder monkey who spams Ohm's law. All jokes aside, we recommend taking these courses seriously and choosing ones that you're actually interested in. This way, you'll enjoy yourself and manage to get some good old-fashioned personal growth. Here, you'll also be entering your elementary math and physics classes. These are the base subjects that all of electrical engineering builds off of, so make sure you take some solid notes. Calculus 1, 2, 3, and 4 consist of everything from quick limits to pages of triple integrals. Linear Algebra teaches you about matrices of numbers and useful ways to handle data, and differential equations provide a mathematical model for objects like springs that jump back and forth until equilibrium is reached. For the physics courses, you'll start off with elementary mechanics and move on to electricity and magnetism, thermodynamics, and a little bit of quantum mechanics. Pay especially close attention to electricity and magnetism, it'll pay dividends later. Now, we need to warn you, many engineers regard these math and physics courses as the hardest part of their degree. Yeah, you heard me right. This first stage can be the most difficult. Although the problems get more technically challenging later on, the difficulty and pace of these courses completely shock students that are used to high school classes. This is why you'll see the most students dropping out of the degree in this stage. To combat this academic culture shock, we've left our favorite resources in the description below so you can stay ahead of the curve. So make sure you subscribe for more engineering insider knowledge like this one. Okay, that gets us through the basics, but now we have bigger fish to fry. The cool part about this second batch of courses is that they're full of content that you're actually going to use in the daily life of your profession later down the road. Kicking it off with our center, the single most foundational electrical engineering course will be your introductory circuits class, EE 101. Its topics are used and expanded on in every single electrical engineering niche, so make sure you pay very, very close attention in this one. You'll get into all types of methods and theories for solving DC and AC circuits while learning about the properties of basic devices like capacitors, inductors, resistors, and some amplifiers. Once you finish this, you unlock even more core EE subjects. Signals and Systems dives into feedback and mathematical translations for electrical signals, namely the Fourier and Laplace transforms. Electromagnetic Fields and Waves takes a physics approach to explain the exact energy and forces of electrically charged objects in different scenarios. And last, but certainly not least, Analog Electronics covers active electrical components like diodes and transistors in more detail and advanced configurations. Although each of these stem from our circuit center, they are still very foundational and are all full of useful concepts that apply to any electrical engineering subfield. To sweeten the deal, the majority of these classes will have labs as well, so you'll actually get to apply what you're learning in class to real-life circuits. You'll learn how to use lab equipment like power supplies and oscilloscopes and complete the rite of passage that is instantly slapping them right under the skills column on your resume. The other side to the EE core is programming and digital logic. Nearly every EE job will require some form of programming, and for good reason. In short, programming makes every project a million times easier. Sometimes, literally. The starter if and else statements in Java and Python will mature into concepts like linked lists and data pointers in languages like C or C++. You'll also get down into the bare bones of coding in an assembly language which is actually playing with the ones and zeros that get saved in memory. As a quick tip, we highly recommend learning Python as your first language because it is basically writing in plain English and is used everywhere in the real world. The coding video in the description will have a ton of other programming resources for you. Meanwhile, you'll learn all about logic gates, muxes, and flip-flops in your digital logic courses. Wait, 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 not that type of flip-flop. Yeah, okay, there you go. Digital circuits are like your normal circuits, but employ a simple twist. 
making every signal simply either on or off instead of continuous like analog signals. Each has their own world of applications in electronics, to be discussed in a later video. But now, we get to start the real fun, the niche engineering courses. At this point, you've already explored the basics in EE and started developing the feelings of what you do and don't like in the field. Now you're ready to start narrowing in on a fulfilling and lucrative profession. A popular destination among EEs is to go into power courses. These students study how electrical energy is generated and converted into other forms of energy. This leads to careers in solar, electric planes, and vehicles, power plants, and other life-changing technology. If you're thinking about this path, pay close attention in your circuits, analog electronics, and signals and systems courses, as well as a good dose of thermodynamics. Other students will find themselves propagating towards the RF and telecommunications field to learn about traveling electromagnetic waves, high-frequency circuits, and Smith charts. These students get to use their own specific lab equipment like network and spectrum analyzers. They pull concepts from circuits, signals and systems, analog electronics, and EM fields and waves. Another popular path is to get into the robotics and mechatronics field. These students will take more mechanical and computer-focused courses like static and dynamic systems and computer networking and organization. They concoct an engineering witch's brew of electrical, mechanical, and computer engineering specialties. Some will take the integrated circuits design route. This is basically designing a tiny circuit that is home to a number of digital or analog circuits. These students take nano circuitry classes that build on electromagnetics, circuits, and analog and digital electronics concepts. If the digital and programming side of things interests you, you might consider going into digital control and processing. These engineers learn how to use microcontrollers and signal processing techniques to basically program an electrical brain that takes environmental input and then tells everything else in an ecosystem what to do. I mean, something has to control how a Tesla makes decisions and drives itself, right? If you want to design that, make sure to explore your digital signal processing and data analysis courses. Staying on the digital side of things, we have the computer engineering niche. Here you can take computer organization and networks, error control coding, and principles of digital communication to prepare for a career at any tech company that manufactures computational electronics. If you want to stray even further into the digital domain, many electrical engineers simply become full-time programmers. All the choices might seem intimidating, and we apologize if we missed any, but the most important thing you can do for yourself is to take the classes that interest you. It doesn't matter if it seems like they might not benefit your perceived career path. Attempting to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life is the most important thing here. But don't stress too much. Some don't even figure that out until decades down the line. And now, you've clawed your way up the long and rigorous road chock full of schematics, lab reports, and endless nights of studying. You finally get to enjoy the fruits of your labor at the exhilarating peak of your degree, the Pinnacle Capstone Courses you actually get to engage in an all-inclusive engineering design process throughout an entire academic year. This is where many students say they picked up the most real-life engineering skills in their degree. To start, you pick a project and team that suits your needs and set realistic goals of what you can accomplish. Some projects we've seen students build are relay satellites, electric bikes, and progressive robots that clean up local streams and lakes. Anything is game here, as long as you can convince your professors that there is a market for your design. This project is almost always discussed in your first interviews out of college, so make sure you find a project that utilizes the skills that you're going to use in your career. For example, if you're interviewing for your dream job designing electric vehicles, would the interviewer rather hear about how you program the algorithms for a smart refrigerator or design the motor for an all-electric go-kart? Obviously, the student who has relevant, hands-on experience gets the job. We also recommend trying to take a role of leadership in your group. Whether it be software lead, hardware lead, or team lead, this too does wonders for your chances in finding a job right out of college. And there you have it. All that's left is to cross that stage and hold up your degree, claiming victory once and for all. But what do you do after you graduate? How do you line up the perfect job right out of school? Should you be prepping for a master's degree? Well, just subscribe for all this information and other useful engineering advice. Want to know what being an electrical engineer is like? Check it out here. Thanks for watching.